Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about some sacred plants and we are going to discuss this topic with reference to ethnobotany. We will understand how our religion, society and biodiversity conservation is related in India and this is with a special reference to sacred groves. Uh, what are sacred groves? Sacred groves, they comprise of patches of land from few trees to forest of several acres that are usually dedicated to gods and goddesses or tree spirits. It means that there is a patch of land which is dedicated to gods and goddesses and the plants which are uh, worshipped, they are grown there. These spaces are protected by local communities and because of their religious beliefs and traditional rituals that run through several generations. People believe that any kind of disturbance will offend the god causing diseases, natural calamities or failure of crops. Now, sacred groves have been a traditional means of biodiversity conservation and no one is permitted to cut any tree or plant, kill animals or birds or do any harm to any form of life in this area. So this is the definition of sacred groves. Now we will discuss some of the sacred plants which usually grow in these sacred groves. We have many sacred groves throughout India and usually these plants they are per, they are present in these sacred groves. These plants are also important ethnobotanically because uh, these plants they are not only worshipped by uh, man but uh, especially by Hindu religion but they are also useful ecologically. So first plant is people plant which is called sacred fig tree and this is ficus religiosa. It is said that Lord Buddha achieved nirvan under this tree and it is considered a holy tree by Hindus and Buddhists. This tree is considered very sacred and people are afraid of cutting it. Because people are afraid of cutting it, so in this way it is conserved. This is state tree of Bihar, Odisha and Haryana and it is worshipped during Vishnu and Pitra Puja in almost every state of India. So because of its religious importance, because of its religious value, the people tree or ficus religiosa is not cut and that this is how it is conserved and it helps in conservation of this plant and this is how it gives us oxygen and uh, cleans the or environment uh, by giving more oxygen. Second plant which we are going to discuss is burgas which is also called banyan tree and the botanical name is ficus bengalensis. This is considered a pious tree and is not cut due to religious beliefs. This is our national tree and state tree of Madhya Pradesh. This plant is worshipped during Vat Savitri Puja by married women in Hindi religion in UP, Bihar and Odisha. And married women tie holy thread around burgas during puja and believe worshipping this tree will bring long life to their husbands. So this is how this plant is also conserved because people are afraid of cutting it and so they the plant is conserved and helps in conservation of this plant. The third plant is bale which is also called wood apple and the botanical name is agile marmelos it is the state tree of puducherry 
leaves and fruits are offered to Lord Shiva during Mahashivaratri, and we find the reference of this tree in Atharva Ved. It is considered a holy fruit and generally planted near Hindu temples. So this is also a holy tree of religious importance for Hindus and because of its religious value the plant is conserved and the uh, uh, leaves are offered to Lord Shiva during Mahashivaratri and the fruit is very nutritious. So ethnobotanically it has it is associated with man for hundreds of years. The next plant is Kadam which is Neolemarkia Kadamba and Kadamba tree is associated with Lord Krishna who is uh, usually depicted playing his flute under it. Uh, you must have heard the song uh, Kadamba Ka Ped or read this uh, in your Hindi books in your school days. The flower is also sacred to Lord Kartikeya. The twigs of the tree are offered to Lord Shiva. So this tree is not only related to Lord Krishna but also it is related to Lord Kartike and Lord Shiva. The tree is also sacred to Jains and Bhagwan Vasu Puja, the 12th Jain Tirthankar is associated with this tree. So because of the religious importance of the tree with various religions and various gods, the tree is not cut and this is how it is conserved. The next tree is Rudraksh which is Aeliocarpus gan ganitrus. The Rudraksh bead is associated with Lord Shiva and considered very sacred by Hindus. Rudraksh beads are seeds of Rudraksh fruit obtained from trees. All legends pertaining to origin of Rudraksh describe them as tears of tears shed by Lord Shiva for the benefit of humanity. So you must have uh, seen uh, that these Rudraksh beads are uh, they hold a very uh, important value in lives of people who believe in them and because the tree is considered very holy and very sacred so it is not cut. You can see lot of Rudraksh trees growing near uh, Rishikesh and we have also some of the trees growing in Delhi. So because of the huge or vast religious value this tree is conserved and this is how it is related to Hindu religion and it is because of the sacred value this is conserved. The next plant is Tulsi which is basil or Osimum sanctum. This is considered most sacred plant among Hindus. The plant is worshipped as goddess Tulsi. And it is believed to purify the homes and ward off evils. Every house has at least one plant. But we have seen that irrespective of any religion in India, we can find Tulsi plant growing in every household because of the medicinal value of Tulsi. The leaves are a part of cough syrup and the decoction is given to children when they suffer from cough and cold. Tulsi is a herbal remedy for various common ailments. The juice extracted from the leaf is given to cure fever, dysentery, skin infections, intestinal worms and to reduce vomiting. The stem is made into beads and is used as rosaries by Hindus. So because of the religious value, because of the religious importance, Tulsi is grown in every household and this is how it is associated with man and it is considered holy and so it is conserved. Thank you for listening to my lecture and giving your time.